Life Stories. Um, but I think it might have been towards the end of 2019 that I had Precept Ministries, um, uh, Precept UK, on my show as an interview. I think I spoke to the founder of Precept UK, uh, um, Precept Ministries, and she sent me a couple of books for the children, which were the names of God from Precept Ministries. And so I gave that to Samuel and Caitlin. So for the first time ever, um, the, the children were doing something completely different. And it was just, it, it only lasted for about, I think two months or so, I forget now, but it wasn't for a very long time. But they went through one of the names of God every day as part of their devotional time with the Lord in the morning. And then after that, I didn't know what to do. So <laughs> we'd kind of come to, I think it was probably around February, and I just think, you know, do I need to get another devotional for my children or what do I do now? And I felt like the Lord said, let them just read the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, they're old enough. Uh, they were 13 at the time. And so I, I challenged them and I said, why don't you read a book of the Bible? Read a chapter every day and then write down something that stands out to you from what you've read. Um, what have you learned about God? What have you learned about yourself? What have you learned that you can apply to your life? Just three short things. Um, and so they started doing that. And, you know, ever since, <laughs> they have now read through, I don't know how many books in the Bible, they keep coming to me saying, I'm finished with one Timothy, Mom, what shall I read now? And I've been trying to help them go from New Testament to Old Testament. So, um, you know, sometimes we underestimate children. Yeah. Sometimes we think, well, you know, I don't know that this is going to really work for them. But especially when they're young, let's just, you know, the Holy Spirit is for, for, for our children and it's for adults. And um, we really try um, and just instill biblical values in our children and wherever we can. And I think the big thing that my husband and I feel quite passionately about is just being honest as well. So there are loads of times where I mess up as a mother or, you know, just as a human being. And I, I feel like it's really helpful for me to say to them then in those moments you know I'm sorry I was wrong this is not good it's not the Christ-like way um please forgive me and kids are just amazing I mean they do they're just very forgiving so I I believe really passionately yeah in us telling our children about Christ it's our responsibility we have to yeah and as a radio presenter on a Christian radio station here in in everybody's view, so to speak, or earshot. Uh, how difficult is it then for you to be a role model to your kids and to other people being in the public eye as a Christian? I guess I really did feel the pressure when, uh, when I was struggling in my walk with God, mm-hmm. when I wasn't fully surrendered. Uh, because you know in your heart that you're not 100% right with Christ. And there's this, uh, the enemy will bring in condemnation quite a lot. And so I lived for years feeling condemned, knowing that I wasn't living the way I wanted to live in Christ. I wasn't living fully surrendered. And that was hard. And that is difficult. It ends up becoming quite a striving thing. Um. You know, where you're trying to, and it's almost as if it feels like you're putting a mask on, you know, and then every now and then the mask drops, you feel exposed and you kind of then you're filled with shame and guilt. And then I've got to go, I'm sorry, I stuffed up again. You know, please forgive me. Um, but I just feel free. I feel so free now. Um, I am who I am and, and I just love the I'm a new creation of the oldest past. And I thank God for his grace on my life. So I feel very free now. 
Amen. And how often have the kids come to you? But mommy, you said. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. Many times. Yeah, we've all had it. I have no. to watch my watch my words because they <laughs> remember. They remember better they than I remember. Absolutely. <laughs> now you were you were in South Africa, you grew up, you went to university, you, you worked in a couple of radio stations, and you came to the UK and you said you applied to the BBC, but you didn't get the job. I know why you didn't get the job. Because you don't have a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you ever considered television presenting? Oh, TV is another animal. You know, on UCB, I do get to do the occasional. Um, UCB used to have TV, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very expensive. And uh, we, we've had to pull back from a lot of those other things that we were doing to really focus on radio, which we felt um, was what God primarily called um, UCB to that, along with the word for today. And so I've had the moments, because I am a staff member, and part of my responsibility is being part of the team. Mm -hmm. And so I have on occasion been asked to I've been hauled in front of the camera to do work in front of the camera, but it's tough. Um, <laughs> I remember Samuel Ball, who's one of my uh, one of my uh, peers and colleagues. The two of us were asked to do a little advert for the expansion of DAB across England, really and we did retake after retake after retake after retake. Um, and so, yeah, it was just painful to try and get this very short, it was probably about a minute advert, the two of us. We just kept forgetting our script. <laughs> so I, I, it's uh, the great thing about radio is that, and my daughter thinks it's really boring because I'm in a studio on my own with a microphone for four hours. I mean, on my own in a glass box she could just can't see how that could be interesting at all but I love it I I absolutely love it um sure you know I'd be open to whatever whatever I'm a big fan of radio myself, and I like you. I used to listen to little uh, radio stations from around the world as well. And uh, I worked in radio for, for quite a number of years as well. Um, but speaking of UCB and, and uh, speaking to guests, okay, have you ever had a guest on your show and you thought after two minutes, oh, I don't really want to talk to this fellow or this person? <laughs> yeah, I have. And that's Was that happened by any chance? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Alan was amazing. 
Uh, his interview is on my on my UCD webpage, by the way. Excellent. Um, yeah, I have, and that's really difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say, I often say, and people think I'm joking, or they just think I'm being super spiritual, but it really is true that God is the producer on that show, mm -hmm. the overall producer. I have um, a couple of colleagues who help me to uh, book the guests. The Lord brings people. I pray a lot that the right people will get in touch with the show. I don't have a huge amount of time to do loads of research and, you know, checks on people. So I, I really rely on the Holy Spirit heavily. And a lot of times if, if I feel a little unsure about somebody, I'll suggest a pre-record. Did we do that, Alan, with you? No. <laughs> um, you know, rather than going live. And yeah. so there, there have, there was one occasion where I will, I will tell you one, uh, where I recorded a testimony. It's a testimony of someone who spoke of a healing. And then when I was trying to get back to them for some of the, the, the kind of more details, it turned out that they'd lied um, in some of the retelling of their story. And so in the end, that testimony never made it to air. But I just thank God that he protected me mm -hmm. and UCB and the listeners yeah. um, by, you know, helping me to do a pre-recorded program. And that actually I just, he gave me this sense that I needed to just wait and hold off. And eventually it, the truth came to light, you know, so I just thank Excellent. God. He, he's a cover really for the, the program. And how much freedom do you actually have on UCB to actually preach the gospel itself? Is oh, it loads. No. Loads. Loads, yeah. Um, so we can, we can pretty much just do whatever. And, and the great thing is that we get to pray for people as well. On our every at the moment, every Thursday from one o'clock, we have prayer breakthrough, and so we have a pastor um, or a, a leader in ministry praying live for people between one and two. I think that might change in the new year, the time of it, but we can keep it. Um, and so, yeah, we can we can share the gospel, and I love it when people like Alan come on the program and they. Um, pray and invite people into a walk with Jesus. It's, it's wonderful. We like to, as a radio station, you, UCB1 is primarily uh, evangelistic in its content. So you will hear a real diversity of mm -hmm. music, Christian music, all Christian music by Christian artists, but a real different range, a varying range. Then on UCB2, it's primarily worship music. Um, and different kinds of worship in the evenings, especially from about seven o'clock, you have different styles. So you'll have your Southern gospel or you, you might have kind of a more up-tempo or more kind of chilled out um, dance worship type style. Dance worship, that was good, Alan. <laughs> more for the Christian, more, more for, the, um, more for the, the person who's been walking with God for a bit longer it's like a discipleship journey. and is, is there some kind of music policy as well whereby you vet certain music that you won't play a certain oh, type sure, of sure yeah. yeah i mean the quality of the music has to be really top notch it's mm -hmm. got to be exceptional i mean i think it's something that i'm very passionate about is that as christians we cannot afford to be less than exceptional at everything we do mm -hmm. we have to be excellent we have to, you know, we can't, if people look at us, I mean, the Bible is very clear about how people, you know, doesn't matter what people think of you and your relationship with God, but if they can look at your life and see your good works and glorify God, then that's a bonus. Um, so I think, you know, we as Christians have to be excellent, mm -hmm. not to please people, but it's for the the smile of heaven Amen. over us. Now you're a full-time mom, full-time worker, full-time wife. How did you manage to find time to write this book? 
Well, it was easy because it was in my time with God in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what made it easy. Uh, I mean, I've had to carve out time to to look through it and edit it. And, you know, I've had a lot of help with um, the, the publishing from Authentic Media. They've been amazing. So I just thank God for that. I couldn't have done it. You know, it took a long time for me to really, again, surrender <laughs> um, to God's will mm-hmm. for me to do this. It took um, from the, the moment that I said yes, uh, that I was offered the contract, to me actually signing it and submitting it. It took four months of toing and froing. Mm-hmm. I didn't just sign it because I knew the cost. Mm-hmm. I knew the cost. So not just financially, I've had to buy a lot of equipment. I've had to pay someone to set up a website for me. Um, I've had to buy copies. I now know what 500 copies of books look like. <laughs> Boxes of books right here <laughs> next to me <laughs> in, the, in the office. Um, but also the cost in terms of time. Yeah. You know, and my number one priority after God is, my husband and my children and I don't I didn't want anything to take me away from that as you say I've got a full-time job as well and and I have to respect and honor the position that God has placed me in at UCB too Um, but I really believe that when we walk with Christ and we're obedient to him he enlarges our capacity and so you know the things that I'm able to do today I remember years ago thinking there is no way that I would have capacity to do that. I think of um, even on my show, on my radio show, interviewing two live guests most days would put the fear of God into me quite literally about three years ago. I mean, I remember when I was begging the woman who was working with me to book some pre-recorded interviews or to give me some space so that I didn't have to interview somebody every single day. Whereas now it's a joy. It's easy. Excellent. I love it. I <laughs> so quite like talking like... to people as well. God, God, God extends your capacity, and you know if you're in His will, He makes a way. Now, just getting back to your story, you mentioned about you know the um, you compared yourself to David as well. Okay, you thought you said a little bit of David. So uh, when you told your story about the um, coming back from South Africa the second time with the kids, and that for me, I read that it's like like a Goliath moment for you. How it it was all there before you. Why do you think God allowed all this to happen to you? In that particular moment, I I I think that um, you know it's this this thread of surrender and obedience that's run through my life. The the importance for me to learn for myself mm-hmm. um, that I can trust God that He is faithful even when I lose everything that I hold dear and that my source would not be in my possession, you know, as someone who the, the fact of the matter is that I, I was well-respected in the community. People knew me, um, you know, I was very involved with the youth before I went to England. And so when I got back, I was back into that community and, um, and then I was involved with the local Christian radio station. Again, I was part of the talent scouting. I was, you know, finding people and training them up. I was very well respected. And so I look at that as an opportunity for um, the Lord to just um, bring me to a place where I, I realized my need for him alone, that I could trust him alone and that he was faithful even in my 
in my most broken moments, you know, and that it wasn't about me and the reliance on uh, my name and my possession and all that I had worked for Mm -hmm. um, and the respect and the honour that I had in in the community and the standing that I had and how people perceived me, that it was was about God, um, first and foremost. Second last question. You mentioned about hearing from God. Apart from reading your book, of course, how can people hear from God today, do you think? Well, the word is always the most reliable. Uh, that's the safest place. And, mm. you know, but don't just read the Bible. Uh, before, I always say, this is how, you know, I started to really enjoy reading the Bible, is by asking the Holy Spirit to teach me. So I would just say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Before I read this, I'm about to read your word. Help me to understand it. Help me to see something in here mm-hmm. of who God is, the nature of God, of who I am in light of who you are. Um, and then ask God to show you, where do I even begin? You know, mm-hmm. um, Lead me to the right place you want me to start. And so I would say God's word. Just be honest with God and ask him to speak to you. Amen. And ask him to help you to be still. You've got to be still. I mean, the Bible says, Psalm 46, verse 10. It's very hard to to do nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Very still. I I find you're right. You're spot on. And I mean, you know, different people hear God in different ways. I love going for walks. So after my show, I'll go for a walk to the alpacas down the road at UCB and I'll just offload. Um, I'll mm-hmm. speak to God and then I'll just be still and I'll look at creation and I'll look at the birds and, you know, and then maybe a thought pops into my head and maybe I'm just reminded of somebody and I'll start praying for them. Um, and so in, I think what it is is really just recognizing that that is God speaking to me. That's one of the ways that God is speaking to me. Excellent. Well, you've made a lot of decisions in your life. Some forced on you, some not. But of all the decisions you have made, what was the best decision you have ever made? Definitely surrendering to Jesus, to his will, surrendering to God. Uh, And then I guess marrying my husband, that would be a close second. (laughs) He's a good guy. Uh, I meant to ask you about your husband. You said when he when, when, when it was going on, you were coming back from the UK, he lost his job. How is he doing now, your husband? He's doing good. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, that was a tough time for him as well. Very difficult. He's the kind of guy who's a fix-it man. Um, so when there's a problem, he wants to solve it. Uh, he's just like a hero when it comes to problems. He loves problems. He loves, he's a problem solver. <laughs> Um, But this was a problem he couldn't solve. And even though he wrote to our local MP, I mean, it just didn't make sense on so many levels, just the perceived injustice. But the reality is that I'd made a mistake. You know, I'd I'd not looked at some of the the specifications on that particular visa. So there was nothing that could be done. And so it was for him to learn as well. Amen. Surrender and trust God. Tell him thanks for your time tonight, of course, for coming on here. And it's been fantastic speaking with you. And hopefully we will speak again uh, uh, soon. So with that, Alan, I'll hand back to you, brother. Thanks, George. Thank you. Thank you, George. And thank you, Ruth, again. It's been absolutely wonderful. I've really enjoyed hearing you share tonight. And just enjoyed being with you on your program, too. Just a, a blessing to be in your company, in your fellowship, in fellowship with you. Thank you for sharing so wonderfully tonight your life story. Please tonight, if you have been blessed by Ruth's story or you pray that prayer with her tonight, or you need help in any way, contact us on our hotline 07943-550-287. Or if you're outside the UK, put plus four four in front of that number. You can phone, WhatsApp or text and someone will get back to you as soon as possible. And you can also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com, and you'll find the How Can I Know God? You can find out more about that. You can find a Bible app, a Gideon's Bible app, which will help you, as we said tonight, reading the Word. That's how God can speak to you. So please do that. Get a hold of that Bible. And uh, 
Also, remind, I must remind you, on Wednesday is the launch of uh, Ruth's book. Um, God speaks 40 letters from the Father's heart. Please contact her. On, there's the book. She's showing you it right now. And you can go to uh, RuthO'ReillySmith.com, and that's how you can get hold of her book. So thank you. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Howard. Thank you all for joining us tonight. But let me remind you that we'll have another story next week. Like Ruth, I, I, I asked God, who does he want to share on these programs? And he's been faithful. Since March 2020, we've had a speaker every Monday evening. And we have some wonderful stories. And we will be back again next Monday at 8 o'clock. The guest speaker next week is a man called Ken Clapham. Ken was brought up in the Toxteth area of Liverpool in a working class family. And he heard God speak to him when he was only seven years old, playing football in the street. He heard God speak to him, telling me one day he was going to be a preacher. And other times God spoke to him. It follows on, really, from what Ruth shared tonight. Uh, so please join us next week, uh, 8 o'clock, on Zoom, on Facebook, and on YouTube, live. Also, during the week at 12 o'clock every day, apart from Saturday, you can go on to YouTube again, a live stories uh, at lunch. And there you will find some of these stories are repeated, parts of the stories repeated. You can also go to uh, the Monday Night Zoom and you can catch up with all the stories that we've had over these past, well, more than 12 months now. And you're getting on for a year and a half now. And you'll be able to catch up and hear Ruth's story again on there. That will be repeated. And again, tell other people about these stories. But thank you again for joining us tonight. May God bless you. May you have a wonderful week. May you know his joy, you know his peace. And God bless you all. Life Stories. Yeah.